Beep, 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 morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are. Jester news we have today. The marvellous Kenny Lamelock. Okay, now, this is an interesting article. It's not directly related to the stuff that the Jester and your good selves viewing are generally interested in, right? But I think it's indicative of something else. So this, is my, this is my word today, indicative. It is indicative. OK, of something else. So I thought it was worth us going through and thinking about what exactly are the ramifications of what's being said. Now, I've noticed a lot of angry people on Twitter this morning getting furious about it. But let's uh, let's let's come to that as we as we go along. The headline of the article is Whitehall Blob thwarts bonfire of Brexit laws. Now, the Whitehall Blob, what they mean by that is a civil service, right? Kemi Badnock, Badnock promises new approach as critics such as Jacob Rees-Mogg rail against administrative failures. Now, the blob is the civil service. So when you, the civil service think, you know, Department of Work and Pensions, you know, Ministry of Defence, all that stuff, right? HMRC, right? Now, I worked for them for years, okay, as an external consultant that would wibble in, talk some wibble, and wibble out. It was wibblish. Right. So I'd go in, do me bit, and go in. So I met, I met literally under the civil servants. And I've got to tell you that they are, generally as a rule, great people. Right, okay. They do a good job and they do it well. However, there are also a number of them that shouldn't be there. They should have been fired. If they were in a commercial organisation, they'd have been fired years ago. So, you know, it's extraordinary, but it's the public sector, isn't it, you see? And they tend to, you know, it's hard to get rid of people and all sorts of nonsense around rights and all this unions and goodness knows what else. So they're a bit of a unionised environment. But what's being said here is as follows, right? Kemi Badnock has said it was impossible to push ahead with government plans to scrap all European laws, European Union laws, because of Whitehall intransigence. On Wednesday, the business secretary announced that she can only immediately scrap or reform approximately 600 EU laws because of the situation she's inherited. Interesting, isn't it? Hmm. The climb down comes, they call it a climb down, obviously it's just reality. The climb down comes despite Rishi Sunak, the Prime Minister, pledging to scrap all rules remaining on the statute book by the end of the year. We knew this was never going to happen that fast. My goodness me, can you imagine the complexity of unpicking EU law, EU law from British law? Jacob Rees-Mogg, the, cap, the Cabinet Minister responsible for the reforms under Boris Johnson, accused ministers of inertia and said that the blob had triumphed. In an article for The Telegraph, Miss Badnock blamed the behaviour of unnamed Whitehall officials for the move, but insisted that her new approach will ultimately lead to greater regulatory reform. When I was handed responsibility for this bill, I saw that, confronted with the default position of retained EU law sunsetting at the end of this year. Whitehall departments had focused on which laws should be preserved ahead of the deadline, rather than pursuing the meaningful reform government and businesses want to see. Some people would call it sabotage. Not me, but some people might say they're saboteurs. From the word sabot, which was a pair of shoes, wooden shoes, called sabot. And they used to throw them into the machinery. They're like you know, people that didn't want progress. Hence saboteurs, right? I decided a new approach was needed. One that will ensure ministers and officials are freed up to focus on more reform of REUL, which is the retained EU law, and to do it faster. During his leadership campaign, Mr Sunak pledged to repeal or review 2,400 EU laws in his first 100 days as Prime Minister. That's 24 a day. Where are you going to find the time to do that? Right, 24 people looking at one, that's what it is. Really? The government's commitment to scrapping all such laws by the end of 2023 under existing legislation was pushed back as civil servants kept finding new EU laws. They are now believed to be 4,800. Mr Rees-Mogg, the former Brexit secretary, said, This is an admission of administrative failure, an inability of Whitehall to do the necessary work and an incapability of ministers to push this through their own departments. It is a victory for the blob over specific promises from the Prime Minister. Deregulation that could have reduced prices, lowering inflation, have been abandoned because of idle civil servants and inert ministers. The climb down has angered Tory Brexiteers, with 20 backbenchers meeting Simon Hart, the chief whip, on Wednesday to vent their concerns. 
The government is expected to publish a list of 600 bills that would be scrapped as part of the retained EU law bill immediately. It said 500 would be scrapped as part of other legislation and that 1,000 laws had already been repealed or altered. But this means that by the end of 2023, far less than half of the promised 4,800 laws would be axed. Miss Badenoch insisted that even after the end of the year it would be possible to repeal more laws. Getting rid of EU law in the UK should be more about should be about more than a race to a deadline, she said. It should be about making sure our laws work for the people who use them. Caution being advised there by Kemi. Regulatory reform is integral to the Prime Minister's mission to boost the UK economy, a mission that puts business, consumers and the British public first. Thank you. She added, I will make it a priority to inject new impetus into the project to identify and scrap even more unnecessary regulations. Critically, by the end of 2023, we will end the supremacy of EU law and provide our courts with the ability to depart from the European Court of Justice case law. With this, we will fully take back control of our laws, our laws as promised in the Conservative Party manifesto. This is good news if this happens. Mr Sunak is facing a backlash over the move, which Labour branded a humiliating U-turn. It's not a U-turn, it's an acceptance of what's going on. What's wrong with Labour? Mental. One senior member of the European Research Group said, we are very disappointed that the REUL bill, which passed through the Commons with the overwhelming support of the political party, is now being watered down by our own government in the Lords. There is still time to avert this decision, and we very much hope the government will reconsider. Another Brexiteer MP said, <clears throat> this is a dangerous for Rishi Sunak. He sold himself as someone who was trustworthy, and he's broken that promise. So they're all having a bit of a spat about it. But it's an interesting one. Um, Stuart Jackson said, ditching the bill, but about to publish a conversion practices bill at the behest of Stonewall, which will be divisive and will criminalise thousands. Yes, a Conservative government. I think it's a really interesting piece, and you should have a read of it. I put it in the Dubris, so you can have a read. It's a really interesting piece. And I think the reason that it's really interesting is because I believe that this is an endemic problem in British society, in that the public sector, for example, the DWP, HMRC, whatever it may be, are completely out of control with leftist nonsense. If we look at the situation in regards to the NHS, where, for example, they're pushing ahead with gender identity ideology, queer theory, critical race theory, with despite the public sector equality duty explicitly forbidding them from do so by saying equality of opportunity is what matters. If it's happening in the NHS, I bet your bottom dollar is happening in the civil service. They're completely captured. Completely captured. So you're going to see what's going on here is actually just, uh, I think, an indicator of the fact that these organisations, these public sector organisations in the NHS, are operating as if they are a separate state from the UK. They are, they are the state within, as they've always called it. It's an idea, this sort of conspiratorial idea of the state within. So I think what that article is showing us and what they're, they're, they're talking about is that there is a deliberate inertia amongst bureaucracies to not, to not allow necessary changes to be made that have been called for by the British people and that have been democratically voted for, alongside that they will not let or take off their ideological blinders and get rid of the likes of Stonewall, um, and anything else to do with gender identity, ideology, queer theory, or critical race theory. That's what I think is going on. But I'd like to know what you think is going on. Do you think this is what's happening here? Are we seeing a civil service that is actually so leftist, so stacked with left-leaning wibblers that sabotage is occurring? You tell me. All right? I think it's an interesting article in that it reveals this kind of thinking. But hey, what do I know? Give us a shout in the comments. Let me know. Buy me a coffee. Blah, blah, blah. The usual. I'll see you later.